few weeks ago I put out a video testing some camo patterns. Well, I was pretty happy with the one I settled on, so I wanted to follow that up with an actual tutorial. It's for my Imperial Guard army. Is that showing my age a bit? They're Astra Militarum now, aren't they? Anyway, so what better mini to use than the classic Chimera? Most of my army will be printed, but I already had two of these lying around in my pile of shame, so I thought, why not use them? If you enjoy this content, please click all the buttons below the video. Like, subscribe, comment, even just click around on your taskbar if you fancy it, I don't know. And if you want to be in my eternal good books, then consider supporting me on Patreon or Coffee. So, I started by priming white and then using rust grey as a base coat. This is a mid-tone for the set of colours we're using, so it won't overpower the pattern too light or too dark. The technique is simple and involves kitchen roll. I simply spend a few minutes scrunching it up, flattening it and scrunching again until I have a load of small wrinkles and ridges. I then put paint directly on the mat as I would with dry brushing, although you can be less lazy and use something intended to have paint on it, and then dab the kitchen roll on it. To make sure all the raised areas have paint, I do a kind of swirly motion around it and press it as I do this. I then wipe off any excess and just dab it onto the model. I'm careful here to get it in all the recessed areas that don't naturally get hit, as it doesn't really look right if you just have all your texture on the outer areas and then all the recessed areas look just smooth. For this I fold the kitchen roll or kind of use the edges and corners. I've started with the lightest colour as this would struggle to cover the darker ones and I try to get a solid one third to one half of the model covered. Next I move on to Lothan blue, then Cantor blue, repeating the previous step. No one can truly remember how long the planet of Lirov has been inhabited by humans. What is known is that the planet used to be a hub of commerce and a financial powerhouse. Then, long ago, a great cataclysm took place. It started with an invasion, but this was not some great force that announced itself with devastating weapons of war, but something more insidious. Somehow, an alien hive infestation had contaminated the waters of Lirov. As I noticed in my testing video, the difficult thing with camo is it's kind of designed to do the exact opposite of what we want to do with mini painting. We want to accentuate and display all the cool little details while camo tries to hide and blur shapes. No worries, we'll just make sure we accentuate over the top of this. I start with pure white, carefully dry brushing to get a solid edge highlight. To use this method, make sure there's very little paint left on the brush and build the colour slowly. You also want to kind of target the raised areas specifically where possible. I recently got this set of enamel panel liners, try saying that ten times fast, and this was the perfect project to try them out on. These are so runny you just touch a recessed area and they just run all along it. Just look at those smooth flows, so nice, so lovely, ooh yeah. Putting it around the rivets immediately shades around them and it takes a little while to dry, so if you get a bit too much you have plenty of wiggle room to wick it back off, put it back on, wick it off again, all good. Remember with enamels you need to clean your brush with mineral spirits, not water, and you will get even better results if you seal your previous coats with a gloss varnish beforehand, although I didn't bother. I'm lazy, what can I say? It is widely agreed that the Lirovans themselves took to a scorched earth policy and practically destroyed their own home in a bid to rid themselves of this. The action worked, but with severe repercussions. Now the humans had to rebuild their transformed planet. Never again would it be considered important on the galactic stage. The atmosphere of Lirov had become filled with chemicals which block out the sun in most areas, leaving them as frozen, inhospitable landscapes. Those that weren't have become irradiated wastelands and where the two biomes meet, weather patterns are dangerous and unpredictable. Its remaining inhabitants have taken to a grim determination and a morbid sense of humour. As I got further down the model I decided to use it in heavier amounts, implying some kind of like oily mess. As these are pre-thinned it didn't quite work how I was hoping. I decided after the next few steps I'd revisit this and find some kind of way that I could figure out to make a streaky mess, some kind of like grime, like grimy streaks, some kind of, fine of course I went back to streaking grime. More on that later though. First let's get our other colours down. I started with lead belcher on the metallics. I painted the tracks, gun barrels and other little details. I then moved on to medium sea grey for insignia and the gun casings. This was to keep the theme that everything is a colour that will kind of blend in with a snowy surrounding. I next used bone white on the kind of flexible leathery parts the guns poke through. These last two steps create a bit more visual interest, even though logically you'd try and camo up everything you could. We're playing war games here, we have to mix back in some of the ridiculous stuff. Finally, I base the searchlight with uniform green. I'm not going to use any OSL on this. 
I want it to look either switched off or like it's giving off some kind of low light, maybe like a infrared, but you know, like in green. I use Basilicanum Grey thin quite a lot with contrast medium to get some smooth shading on the parts I coloured grey before. I then shaded the leather parts with Seraphim Sepia. Finally, for shades, I use Null Noil heavily over all the metallics. Then, more strife hit the sector at large, as trade deals with an independent power had become strained. This rogue trader had somehow acquired a personal army of battle brothers, known as the Leaves of Prosperity. They now bore down on the sector, and the Lerovan conflict in its past became a blessing in disguise. As other systems were subjugated, the Lerovan 6th through 11th regiments mobilised. For the next step I went back and re-established my base tones, using medium sea grey on the casings and bone white on the leather. I decided the leather was a bit warm and kind of detracted from the overall palette, so I started by using off-white to highlight in a scratchy, uneven motion. This still felt a little bit light and warm, so I used Gobi Brown, starting with a kind of scratchy pattern, and then using it watered down in a patchy stippling effect. This made the tones more towards a colder green colour and I was happy with that. The Battle Brothers had torn through more central planets, and now the Lerovans pushed back against those and actually recaptured some territory. However, the brothers were too well equipped and funded as part of their relationship with the rogue trader, and the conflict was never truly on the side of the defenders. After a short and bloody war, the invaders arrived at Lirov. Okay, never mind all that other shit, let's get to some streaking grime, baby! I use this more conservatively than I usually would, kind of picking areas that look like moving parts that might be oiled up, or areas along the bottom that might have picked up some random crap. For the first time I also use it for, I think it's intended purpose, which is drawing a brush downward to create, you know, streaks of grime. Once this has dried for about 20 minutes, you do the magic part. Take a cotton bud and some mineral spirits and just start dabbing away all the stuff you don't want. For the streaks, blend it downwards and soften any hard edges. For the more covered areas, you can remove it from the sticking out areas. If you want a bit of a gnarly effect on a mini, this stuff is just perfect. As the Lerovans settled in for a last stand, an envoy arrived from the rogue trader. It turned out, although their attackers knew they would eventually wear down the planet, they were tired of the direct force approach against Lerov and came to bargain. The discussions did not take long and soon there was a ceasefire. Now, Lerov enjoys most freedoms it did before, and now, although the subjugation is a dark and difficult spot in their collective memory, the Lerovans have assimilated it into their culture, taking a grim pride in the fact that they were never broken or outright defeated and they never gave up. We're basically done now, so I focus on the searchlight, using moot green and then necrotic flesh to avoid it looking too vibrant, and finally adding some white into the previous colour for some edge highlights. Now we just have the rest of the edge highlights to do. I start with grey sear for the gun casings, then use silver for the metallics, but opt to do this in a scratchy dry brush to make the metal look a bit battered. If you do this, you want a bit more paint than you have for a classic dry brush, and to make sure you alternate direction and do a kind of stippling dry brush hybrid motion. A dripple? A sty brush? I don't know. Anyway, that's everything, but now I want to get that cold environment by adding some snow to the vehicle. I usually use Valhalla and Blizzard for this, but I thought I'd experiment with other stuff in case there's anyone watching who doesn't want to spend the unneeded money and wants to use some kind of home ingredients. The first method I tried was a mix of about two parts PVA glue, one part white paint and two parts fine basing sand. I pushed this into piles in corners using an old brush and it gave a much thicker, more obvious result than the Valhalla and Blizzard. I realised after that that the paint hadn't quite covered the sand on its kind of sticking out areas, so I went back with another white dripple to complete the snowy look. Next, I mix in some of this fluffy snow stuff with some PVA glue and applied that in the same way. This was thicker than the first method, but less obvious than the second. 
You can judge for yourself which you prefer. I think they all have their merits and they do work quite nicely together. Maybe I'll experiment more in the future with using all three. There we go then, bing bang boom and it's done. Thank you for watching and if you want to see some of the units in action then click on this video. Okay bye!